better, faster, stronger. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about hand sewing. This uh, needle here has one strand of thread through the eye and so when you're sewing you're using two thicknesses and that's what I do if I'm sewing a binding or any other type of hand sewing where I don't want a lot of thread to show. So I'm just going to show you on this finished piece how I would start here and sew up even though this is already done and I, I do always start here but I'm going to show you with this other this rust colored thread how I would do it. Before I start I'm going to use the thread conditioner because I do find that it really makes things uh, more controllable. And for me, I like to hold the work in my left hand and that way I can use my thumb and forefinger to kind of uh, shape the work as I'm going. And I like to use a thimble usually on the middle finger. And this one doesn't fit quite right because my nails are quite long right now. Um, but it's the one I use often when I'm beading. And I have this preference to hold with my left hand and then sew away from me. If I stitch this way and try to sew this direction, it doesn't work very well for me. So what I do is I start here and I, I like to get my needle underneath and hide it underneath the work. I like to take a double stitch here because it's kind of a stress point. And then I'm feeling underneath to make sure that I don't sew through and have thread showing. And if I did, I could feel that pulling right against my finger. In fact, sometimes you could feel it through the final layer of fabric pulling against the, your skin. You know, just sort of that movement, like, like a snake through a, <laughs> I don't know, through something or other, through the grass. But um, I just like to, to get into the fabric right about here. But I work my way up making these little stitches and I try not to leave any ones that are loose in my path. Oh, if I have trouble, I will use my thimble, which you can use to push and you can also use it to pull. And if I'm really having trouble because I've got a really tightly quilted area, I would keep my fingers down here below where I'm working and I would take my needle nose. Now I'm not up here anywhere, I'm down here and below. And I would poke this in there turn the fabric to get it to come out where I want it. Now I'm feeling really well to make sure it's not showing on the other side. And if I'm really concerned, I can look. Oops, it is showing. So I look, it's not showing anymore. and then I use my needle nose to pull it through. And of course it would be much stiffer in a case where I really was using that. And I travel north from the south. And I would go all the way around a quilt if this were a binding. Doing it, making the stitches as far apart as I felt like I could justify as neat as I could get them. This green one has a different setup. Here I think you can see that I have actually been through the needle twice with two strands of thread and so if the shadows aren't too much of a problem you can see that I have two threads going through the eye and four threads that will be going through my project each time. If I'm sewing on something like a beautifully sewn button, I can get there a lot faster with this. It's simple math. 
and it adds up really fast. So if you go through three times, you're already up to 12 threads. And so you can have your project look really nice. And as long as you knot off properly, you'll still have a nice, thick, uh, sturdy project. The last one here is done the same way, but this is actually with a buttonhole twist. And buttonhole twist is not available in that many colors and uh, I certainly wouldn't even want to buy one of everything they do have available. But so this is uh, the same situation where if I were sewing on the button for oh, my husband's best overcoat, I would use this. I would also use some kind of a shim when you're sewing a number of things in a row especially, but even when you're finished. What I like to do is knot off my project wherever I am. I would like to knot off again, usually about a quarter inch away from the knot that I tied to the project. And then I cut between my two knots. And by doing that, my thread that I have is now ready to start up the next napkin, the next tacking on a leaf, for years I would uh, clip my thread, chase my tails, re-knot, re-trim my tail, and then uh, start to sew my next item. And it was being out in the wind sewing at art fairs and at the downtown markets with those thread tails whipping around that I realized, um, boy, if I knot off first, I don't have to chase those tails in the wind. And the nice thing is, of course, it's much faster. One of the things I wanted to show you is that I rarely ever sew where I want my knot to show on either side, and so I have to bury my knot a lot. And then it's buried in there, and it's in there pretty tight. If I pull hard enough, it'll come out. I'm going to put it through. gonna pull my knot. There I buried my knot and then if I really needed to get it out of there I'd get it out of there. Thanks! Get easy notifications of new tutorials by liking me on Facebook or following my tutorial board on Pinterest.